So tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in IoT. Sure. I'm uh, Brian Bedrosian. I'm responsible for our embedded wireless business at Broadcom. Uh, really our IoT for connectivity uh, group. Mm -hmm. um, I've been uh, at Broadcom in the wireless group since 2002 okay. and run various parts of the business from uh, broadband networking and, and mobile products for smartphones. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we started the IoT group about four years ago in 2011. Okay, wow. So now what do you find different? I mean, so you've been at Broadcom for a while and you've, you've seen different businesses. How do, you find, how do you find IoT business different from your perspective? Well, we really set out with the IoT business recognizing very early that uh, it would require an ecosystem of partners yes. uh, and product solutions. Very much so, yeah. Um, we also knew that it was going to be a much more diverse customer set and a much more diverse set of applications, largely spurred by uh, the mobile user interface that a smartphone mm -hmm, provided, mm -hmm. um, but also because of the broad adoption of, of broadband access in every home and enterprise. Right. Um, so uh, really our strategy from the onset was to create very simplified tools that were scalable across many different applications. Okay but also include a partner ecosystem that completed the whole solution yeah. uh, for our customers. Cloud services, applications, hardware and production support, uh, really the entire manufacturing and solution ecosystem. So when, when, a, when a product brand is looking to IOTize their product, so to speak, what, are, what should they be looking for in an ecosystem? What are, what's important? I think um, you know one thing that we've learned over the last few years is that uh, the solution should be uh, fairly targeted. Yeah. Uh, the simplest applications are the usually the best, yeah. um, but having a very consistent user experience, uh, a uniform and uh, trustworthy um, set of uh, capabilities, mm -hmm. I think those are the critical components. Okay. So. When you look at the solution set then, you really want to have the very best uh, you know, connectivity and processing <laughs> solutions, something that's robust but cost effective, yep. and know that you have a solution set of uh, partners from cloud to yep. device right. that uh, you can count on. Mm, yeah, that's good advice. Well, let's, let's, turn to, let's turn the view a little bit. I'm a developer and I have a product and I want to, I want to put it on the Internet of Things. What are the different options that, that are available to me? Yeah, I think you know, that's an interesting question and we keep looking at how that's evolving. Yeah. Um, when we look at the options for products and how they're connected, uh, we tend to split the world into wired and wireless. Yeah. Um, we think that most of the connected products today, really the, tr the trend and the, the best options are wireless because it provides for a lot more agile interface. Uh, not only directly to a smartphone or tablet, but also to the home network or even uh, through a bridge into a cellular m to m network. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you know the first things we look at is kind of how the device might get connected to the cloud, okay. and, and then really what the device uh, uh, requirements are for execution. So how much memory or processing or right. what's the display uh, going to be required. Mm -hmm. So... Um, those are kind of the fundamental elements that we look at at okay. the IoT device set. And what about the sensors themselves? Now, I, I don't think you're producing sensors, but you're interfacing with sensors. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, you know, at, at Broadcom, we don't develop a lot of the individual sensors themselves, right. but we develop all the sensor processing interfaces and software that uh, enjoin their inputs uh, into the system application. Okay. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that... I, that uh, developers really have a hard time with is, is choosing what quality of sensor they should find, right, right. Uh, how often to access and process that data. Yeah. Um, those are the uh, system applications uh, components that our engineers are quite expert in and, mm -hmm. and really help with the algorithm development to utilize. Now, do you help your customers you know, in these respects? I mean, is that part of, is that part of the deal, so to speak? Yeah. yeah. We like to try and help all of our customers, and, and as uh, I mentioned, when we started this business, we knew we'd have many, many more customers than we'd be able to work with individually. Right. So um, our strategy has been to develop a, a software development kit and hardware platform that's essentially turnkey okay. for any of the vertical applications and create an online user forum where we can have our engineers nice. interact nice. Uh, and let the community of users interact with one another 
uh, it's, uh, I often kind of joke around about social engineering uh, or, or, you know, Gen Y uh, customers are very used to doing everything collaboratively and online. Uh, you know, when I was a student uh, in, in college, we all just met in the basement of the library and, and did our social engineering there. But now these user forums, I think, are very robust. And then, of course, we have an ecosystem of development partners that have expertise uh, to help each of the customers as well, both for their cloud connectivity agent, the applications they write, uh, and even you know, hardware integration. So, um, through that whole partnership channel, we're able to provide individuals to support to you know, a great deal of, of our customer base. Nice, nice. Now, you've been in the industry for a number of years now, four. I mean, that's not insignificant for at least you know, what's been classified as IoT. You probably observe some best practices. Can you share them with our, with our viewers? Yeah, I think um, you know, it's, it's really been clear as this market's evolved and you know, being part of it from the onset, it's easy to chase a lot of different ideas. Uh, and I think one of the very best practices is having a very clear definition uh, up front. Right. Uh, the product uh, value proposition, um, you know, the cost targets, the feature set, and a, a real bar for simplicity. Mm -hmm. I think those are essential elements to uh, really what it takes to launch a product. No, that's, that is good advice. And I, I'm curious, though, so what percentage, if you're just to you know, put your thumb up there, percentage would you say of the customers that approach you or the people that you work with are, have actually done that due diligence or done that work? You know, it's really interesting. I think the, uh, the early entrants into this marketplace generally have been very uh, focused on okay. an objective or an idea. Okay. Yep. And um, because there are no real market leaders in any of these right. new areas, um, I think there's, markets. yeah, mm -hmm. new markets in, in, in you know, many of the applications. So it's really allowed people to be fairly specific and focused because there isn't as much of a competitive threat in right, any right, element. Right. And I would say the majority of our, our customers, <clears throat> you know, thumb in the air, 80%, yeah. uh, okay. have really had a fairly sound idea up front uh, on, on the feature sets. Hmm. I think the challenge has been on the system application. Yes, so yes. how to manage that cloud right. application and the right. subscription service, that's taken more time and more challenge uh, yeah. for most of our customers. No, absolutely, and taking that further into you know, gathering the data and then doing something useful with, with the data. Yeah. Well, that's an, interesting, that's an interesting trend. What about some other trends have you observed in the embedded you know, IoT space? What could you share with us? I think you know we're seeing a definite move toward uh, a ubiquity of wireless connections, um, and both taking advantage of the smartphone and the home mm -hmm. network, uh, a drive toward battery-operated devices, yeah. uh, so low power, uh, wireless, and continuous connectivity uh, has really been a big trend that we've seen. Um, taking advantage of standards-based uh, networking technology yeah. uh, to allow for these diverse set of connections that are essentially consumer blind to the technology itself and really allow them to enjoy the application. Well, great. Um, our viewers, if they want to find out more information about you or your company, can you steer us in a few different places? Yeah, uh, well, you can find out more about Broadcom's IoT technology at www.broadcom.com slash Wicked, W-I-C-E-D. Wicked? Wicked? Yeah, I have to ask you about that. What, what the heck's up with Well, Wicked? Wicked is our brand. It stands for Wireless Internet Connectivity <laughs> for Embedded Devices. Oh, baby. Yeah, a great acronym. Actually, our awesome. engineering team came up with it. <laughs> sounds uh, like something an engineering team would come up with, but yeah, it sounds cool. Okay, Wicked, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we've got a collection of uh, information there uh, nice. targeted toward right. vertical markets and applications. You know, Wicked Wi-Fi and, and Wicked Smart, which is our Bluetooth I low like energy it, solution. I like it, I like it. All right, well, I'll be sure to put that in the show analysis notes. Thank you for the interview. Thank you.